This week on the Tierra Talk Show, we welcome back our cast member corner segment in which we speak to past or current cast members of the Disney theme parks from around the world. Hi, I'm Jennifer Spensley. I played Pocahontas in the Animal Kingdom show, um, Pocahontas and Her Forest Friends. And this is one I wanted to talk about for so long now. <laughs> because we, as you as you already heard, I, I sent Jennifer my interview with the cast of The Spirit of Pocahontas. And uh-huh. what I, I didn't get to see that show, but I did get to see Pocahontas and her forest friends in 98. And believe it or not, Jennifer's on my home videotapes, everybody. <laughs> was, that, was that you? Were you the little girl that, that was like all excited? Or That was me with my mom in the rain oh. <laughs> <laughs> with our yellow ponchos. <laughs> it was so cute. Oh, thank you. It was fun. I The only thing I, I really am sad about is I never got to hit the drum <laughs> that oh, began sorry. the show. <laughs> That's like the most exciting thing in the show for the little kids. Yeah, they're like, oh my gosh. And then you got a certificate. I digress. I will post the video of myself and also (laughs) Jennifer's Pocahontas in the show notes below. You can click on that link so you could check it out yourself, what we're talking about. But um, (laughs) it's great that they brought Pocahontas to the parks. I kind of feel like she is such an absence from Animal Kingdom nowadays, even though she's there for meet and greets. But you were the first Pocahontas in this show in 98. So can yes. you talk me through the audition process and then going into the <laughs> rehearsal process? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I think I want to say it was the winter-ish of 97 when they were... Um, auditioning Pocahontas's and I think they went to New York and a couple other places Um, and then they did local auditions I was already in Florida uh, already working for Disney not in uh, I didn't play um, I wasn't in an equity role I was uh, at Magic Kingdom and uh, saw the audition Um, they were auditioning for several shows at Animal Kingdom Animal Kingdom had not opened yet it was opening in April of 98 and so they were auditioning people for the lion king show the um that show that i think is still there um and uh the jungle book show and for this pocahontas and her forest friends they said but we'd love to see you for pocahontas tomorrow (laughs) so i said okay so i came back the next day um to audition for pocahontas and a guy named mike corcus uh wrote the show um and he was directing it and I guess Russ, who was the the guy who um, was running the auditions, he had seen me sing before, or he'd heard me sing before, and so he had already told Mike that that I was coming and that I he should watch for me. And so um, Mike looked at me, and he I he audibly he looked at uh, he looked at Russ, and then he said, "You know, I've seen a lot of girls that look just like Pocahontas that can't sing." So. Um, And Russ said, "Um, just wait. And so I sang and Mike handed me the script and said, go read that. (laughs) I'm going to call you back in. So that was it. I I had a really good audition. And then they called me back a couple months later and I didn't have a call back or anything. They just called back and said, you got it. And so um, left Magic Kingdom and went right to Animal Kingdom and uh, practiced. You know, they were he had written the show, but we hadn't practice with any animals yet we had to get rabies shots (laughs) because there was you know we had live animals in the show and um just got to know all the animal trainers and it was it was nice just opening a new park I'd never done that before so that was just exciting and um yeah did the first show on opening day I did the the show for Michael Eisner when he was approving the show and yeah it was good times. <laughs> and you said something very interesting when we were talking beforehand that this was one of the first animal shows that had them coming out with cues, but not with trainers, with an actor. I, I actually just found that out recently. So this was the first animal show, I believe, the first animal show in the country that ever had um, animals coming out to cues that were already pre-recorded. So um, normally, uh, if a if an animal was going to be in a show, they were if they used a track, it didn't have cues for the animal to come out without an actual animal trainer or some kind of person on the stage. This this show, um, animals came out without any trainer on stage um, for the first time ever. Something happened every show. Like I don't think we ever had a show where 
some animal didn't do something funky. Um, so there would be times where they just didn't want to come out and you would just pretend that they did, or you would, you know, pretend, I don't know, see, you would act like that you knew everybody else couldn't see them, but you know, they were just hiding in the bush or something like that. Um, birds would at the end, I don't know if you remember the birds would come out and like land on Pocahontas's hands and, um, then they would fly off, but half the time they landed on my head. And, and, and the thing is you're on stage by yourself, but you have two puppets on stage per se. Grandmother Willow, I think they brought her from the spirit of Pocahontas so they, they could did. use her again. Right. They did. Yes. And then Sprig was new, I yeah. believe. Right. Yeah, he was he was a he was created from Mike Corcus's imagination and it was awesome. But I mean, these puppets were just so uh, they were two very different puppets. Um, Sprig was all kind of mechanical from underneath the stage. Um, and there were times where Sprig broke and they were fighting to keep him erect. And it was <laughs> I mean, those our puppeteers were they had some arm muscles happen and they were awesome. So <laughs> And you said that you got to test this show out in front of Michael Eisner and Bob Lamb. So what was that process like? Cause did you just do the whole show for them or did you do it a couple times or just segments? Um, I, we, I only did it once um, for them. That's all they needed. So basically right before the park opened, they just needed to look at it and see if they liked it and then, um, if they, you know, wanted any changes. Um, so, uh, my, I was, Mike liked my show a lot. I don't know if it was cause I had my own hair. I didn't wear a wig or, or what, but Mike wanted me to do the show for them and that was fine. And, um, so we ran the entire thing. We try, I, I don't know if all the animals were ready. I want to say the raccoon wasn't. So we actually had to have a trainer come out on the, on the stage to help us out with that part. But, um, yeah, he, we, we ran the show with as many animals as we could. And Mike had told me afterwards, he said they were so excited because for some reason they didn't know that there were going to be that everything was going to be a live animal. And so every time a new animal would come out, Bob Lamb would go, is that real? Really? That's real? And so, <laughs> so they were really excited about it. And so as soon as it was done, he goes, no, we love it. It's good. So. And I like you mentioned the hair because it seems <laughs> like that is the key thing about Pocahontas, especially with the wind and everything. That yes. was her real hair, guys. <laughs> it's crazy. The, please watch the video. There is a full video of the first day of the show, which I will also link in the show notes that Jennifer had sent to me. So you can see Jennifer's full performance, but that is her full <laughs> head of hair. Congratulations, girl. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. It's still kind of long now, but it not, it's not Pocahontas long. So. What was that feeling like on the first day, opening day, doing the show for, I think, you know, probably six groups of audiences? I don't, it was kind of surreal. Like everything was so exciting that day anyway, because, you know, there were film crews and the, we had that big opening thing into the front of the park before, you know, when we were letting the first guests in and things like that, it was just, it was a crazy day and it went by in such a, a kind of a whirlwind. Um, I only had to do three shows that day. I did the first three and then uh, because um, I think we had three girls working and all of us wanted to do shows on that first day, of course. So, um, so yeah, we, we all, we divvied it up and we each did three and uh, um, it was hot. I do remember that. <laughs> so, and it got to the point that was before we had the covering. I don't know if you remember um, or if you were there after they put like a, kind of a mesh covering over the audience and the stage in parts because there was really no shade. You just baked at that show um, for a while. And it got to the point where our stage would get so hot the animals couldn't come out on it. They couldn't walk on it. It would burn their little paws. So um, we had to come up with something. So they came up with that mesh kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so that day was hot and a little bit gross, but really fun and really exciting. And um, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever been to an opening day of any kind of Disney park or anything. It's um, everyone is so excited. Like the energy coming from the guests is, is it's already exciting on any normal day, but it's, it was so over the top that day. It was just really, really a good time. 
I honestly, I mean, it was such a tiny little show. It was, you know, 12 minutes long. It wasn't terribly exciting. I think that they could have actually scaled it back and um, kept a lot of the animals and moved it to a small place by Conservation Station. And I think that would have been a draw to bring more people to Conservation Station. But also, I think that's where she belonged. I think that that's what her message was. And, and I don't know, I think that she was kind of misplaced in, in the beginning. I think she should have been over in that area from the beginning, but there's no stage there, but I think they should have put one. So how long did you play Pocahontas, by the way? Um, well, I mean, Animal Kingdom opened in 1998 and then I left mid 1999. Um, when I got married, um, I worked at Magic Kingdom prior to that. Um, that's a different union. So at <laughs> the, uh, when you sing, um, at, animal kingdom your equity and so um in an equity show you you say your roles but um at magic kingdom i was a friend of pocahontas's from 1995 until i went to magic kingdom so i was one of the first ones there um in 95 when the movie opened she was at a like it was called the grove i think in liberty square behind it was, it was this little nook area right by the bridge. So she was there for um, when the movie opened and she stayed there for a while. And then um, there was a breakfast where you could meet Pocahontas and John Smith and um, Governor what? Ratcliffe Biko. I know, at the where Wilderness was... Lodge. Are you at serious? The... Yeah. <laughs> so she had a breakfast at the Wilderness Lodge. And then that left, I want to say, in 97 and then Animal Kingdom opened in 98. So when the 25th anniversary parade opened, uh, that was the, uh, remember the magic parade and that, uh, Pocahontas was on a float um, with Miko or John Smith, depending on the day. Um, and it was that whole Peter Pan unit, Jungle Book, Pocahontas. Um, Mary Poppins was on that float as well, I believe. Uh, so that was right towards the end of the parade. And then, you know, after the 25th anniversary was off, they just removed the 25 and it just stayed Remember the Magic. So, yeah, it was good. And I, I if I would meet a child at breakfast in the morning and, and they were, you know, really enamored with Pocahontas, I'd ask them if they were going to watch parade and I'd tell them where to sit. And then so I'd make sure I'd pull them out and they'd get, you know, another little special moment later. It was just it was good times. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, I know, cute, huh? It makes that's gonna make me cry. Did did you ever get to meet or get in touch with anybody who sent you photos of being with you as Pocahontas? Yes, yeah, I've met uh, I, I've met some several kids. I'm actually still in contact with with some kids who sent um, letters with photos. I have a necklace that a little girl named Chelsea made me. She lived in Ohio and she made this, she, you know, cause Miko broke the Pocahontas necklace. So she, or I, uh, not Miko, um, Kokoam when he dies in the movie <laughs> breaks the necklace. Um, and then Miko fixes it. But she said, you know, you need a spare. So she made these, she was from Ohio and, and I guess there's Buckeyes there. So she, uh, make took a piece of leather and drew her dad and um she drew drilled holes in it and made a little necklace with buckeyes on it i still have it (laughs) i know it's so cute right even if you're having the worst day somebody can turn it around and just melt your heart so it was awesome what have you been doing since are you are you still performing because you have such a beautiful voice i i hope you got to still perform (laughs) thank you that's very sweet um i I'm not. I did a couple things, but um, my husband was in the military, and so we kind of took off right away, and um, he, we were stationed in Washington State, and I did a a show out there when um, Making Tracks was doing, uh, they were doing some trials out in um, Issaquah, and so I did just a couple little things, but we had kids early, and um, so... I, I stopped performing and then we, um, started moving a lot. So we, I've, I've moved out of the country and now I'm back again, but we lived in China for a while in the Netherlands and now we're back here in New Jersey. And so, um, it's been a little kind of a a whirlwind (laughs) life, but it's, I don't really miss it because I sing plenty around the house. It's not that big of a deal. It was, it's, it's more for me than it is for, um, anybody else. I was never a big, uh, kind of show-offy, I need attention performer. I just did it because I 
happen to be good at it and I, I liked doing it. So I'm perfectly content singing while I vacuum as well. So do you still keep in touch with a lot of the cast members you got to work with back in the day? I do. I, I think there's something about the Disney family that you just, you're going to have your each other's backs forever. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm still in touch with people I worked with at, at Magic Kingdom. I'm still in touch with puppeteers and animal trainers and other girls who played Pocahontas in the Pocahontas show. I just, if ever I need anything, I mean, the stage managers, I love them. I mean, if, if anything ever happened, if we, and if any of us needed each other, we'd be right there. So it was a good family. Well, I have three Disney themed questions. I end my show with every time with each guest. So um, they're called the fab three. So we'll start with the Donald one, which is as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites to see in the movie theater? Huh? In the movie theater. So I never saw a Disney movie in a movie theater when I was little because we just did not have very much money. So I, didn't see anything. Um, I do, my parents did buy like a Betamax because <laughs> for some reason they thought that was going to be better than VHS and it wasn't. But um, we had a movie called, oh, this is going to be weird, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Um, and I watched that a lot. And our goofy question, what Disney character besides the characters of Pocahontas do you uh -oh. think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Who? Um, if I met them in person, I think Esmeralda would be kind of fun. And our Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what okay. immediately comes to mind? I don't know if it's even a whole song that um, when Dory goes, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. <laughs> I have kids and I just kind of keep going through the day. So. Well, I can't thank you, Jennifer, enough for being on the show. And my final question for you is, as a Disney cast member, being able to be a part of that Disney family, can you use one word to describe that experience? Oh, um, yeah, probably just happiness. It was a good time, happiness. <laughs> horn and call our animal friends. We need to learn the secrets before it's too late. 